Hey guys, Magna back here with another ladder game from Legacy of the Void Beta. Um, I'm playing Terran in this game once again and fighting an opponent with the name of Stregel. Uh, I'm not totally sure how you say that name. Getting a lot of people from different regions, probably in a language that I don't speak uh, more than likely, but I thought this game was fairly interesting for you guys to watch. Mostly for tempo stuff. Uh, you'll notice that this is the fastest possible spawning pool you can get if you're Zerg. Uh, and this would be a 12 pool, meaning that you didn't produce any drones, you just made a pool right away, and then you tried to attack with Zerglings. And I was just kind of curious how this would match up, considering I was going for Command Center first this game. So um, I thought this would kind of be a little bit of an interesting game, but the also other interesting thing is they seem to be very attached with making four-player maps in Legacy of the Void. So he's actually sending his Overlord to the correct location here. But the fact is that it won't actually get there before the Zerglings are ready to start running around on the map. So it should show that uh, Command Center first is fairly viable, even if they go 12 pull, because there's a high chance that they won't scout correctly to begin anyway. And uh, the chances are if you were to send a drone out at the right time, which he's unfortunately not doing, the drone would probably get to this base and just realize that this isn't here. So it's most likely he would actually send his Zerglings across the map this way, and then head back over to my base and try to get me uh, off guard. But uh, I will eventually realize what's going on as far as the super early Zerglings, and I see it now. So um, he has to know that I'm at the bottom or at the top right or the top left in some fashion or another. And he still doesn't know because his Overlord is still traveling along here. So. Along with the income changes come the scouting changes, and this is the first game that I saw that really brought that to light quite a bit. Uh, you'll note that I do go ahead and fully wall off here upon seeing the 12 pool, and he's doing what we discussed, and he's thinking that I'm probably top left. He's going to try to head up there because his overlord hasn't seen anything yet, and usually just want to eliminate possibilities as soon as possible. So uh, the only factor here as far as me being able to keep my command center, and by the way, if you were to head up to the top right base, I might have still had a chance at finishing that command center anyway. So I just lift the command center off, headed up to the high ground. I have my two barracks here. I'm going to start making marines. I'm going to build a bunker right next to my ramp so I can have the marines protect the bunker the best they possibly can. Even if the bunker gets canceled, he's going to trade pretty poorly against that anyway, so it's not a, too big of a deal for me. But I basically went Command Center first against the most ag aggressive Zerg build possible, and I'm still okay. So <laughs> I just thought, excuse me, that this was a pretty interesting game to start off with. Un annoyingly, I didn't fi actually finish this bunker, but it's probably best that it's that way, so I can just cancel it on a moment's notice in case he decides to keep attacking it. But he's already lost, uh, I think, what, three Zerglings, and I haven't really lost anything. I've lost two SEVs and that's totally okay. I just decided to bust down the ramp here and take that bunker as soon as possible. I can wall my ramp, so now this is totally under my control. Now it's just a matter of weeding these things out and kind of trading favorably against them, which, to be honest, I don't really do that great of a job of, but uh, the transition is what's really important here because I'm on two command centers. The income is relatively equal between the two of us. I'm ahead by a few workers now, but the double mules especially is going to be a big reason why I can start to vault myself ahead in this game and really press my advantage. The only annoying thing is I do have to start trying to clear out these Zerglings. They do have speed now, so this is actually a really, really fast speed. And I wasn't expecting them to have speed this fast, so I kind of got my Marines caught a little bit, but a couple of Marines for a lot of Zerglings, especially since it's on me to try to clear these out. I probably could have just dumped these Marines out and went over here and killed these Zerglings really cost efficiently, so that was kind of a dumb thing on me, but I'm also not really sure what's going on in his base, so if these happen to be Banelings or something, it'd be a hard uh, way for me to trade against that and I don't know what else he has out on the map so I guess being cautious here is probably to my advantage. I'm gonna go ahead and start two factories here since I do have the income for that. I'm gonna try to get some Hellions on the map, try to exert a little bit of map control and see what I can get done that way. Realizing that he might have to deal with those Hellions that are coming out, he's gonna go ahead and get a Roach Warren, which is a pretty smart play considering he knows that trying to defend against a big Hellion counterattack is gonna be pretty difficult. And by the way, I totally dropped the ball here and let these Zerglings get out. I dumped my Marines one way, and he just happened to run his Zerglings around the other way. So that was really unfortunate. Probably should have full walled here just to assure that I could kill those Zerglings so they wouldn't have been much, more of a, much of a factor for the rest of the game, but not too big of a deal, I guess. 33 workers to 25. He's actually started to vault himself to head a little bit. And to be fair, that was mostly because I was actually just skipping workers for a little while and being a little bit lazy about that. So mistakes definitely do still happen. 
Uh, uh, he's going ahead grabbing a lair here. Not really sure what that's supposed to do for him in this early stage of the game unless he's planning on going Ravager, but Ravager versus Hellion is a pretty bad trade for the Ravagers unless there's a lot of Hellions. Um, which is an interesting note, by the way. Um, I will say that Ravagers really do well against big armies, and that's kind of what they're designed to do. Against smaller armies, or maybe like four or five units, they're actually really bad. Um, in terms of if those have really good trades against them, because I'm pretty sure the Ravagers are light units. But uh, he's going ahead and trying to take a third base here. I'm just trying to catch up an economy here, or kind of stabilize a little bit. You can see I'm missing workers once again, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, just trying to work out the kinks here, trying to get a little bit more adjusted to the tempo of the game and whatnot. But still, got to acknowledge the mistakes when they're there, because you can always play better in that regard. Grabbing a Hydra Den is this Zerg, and I don't think that he really knows what he wants to go for here. I think he's realizing that a big Hellion play can be possible, considering he's starting his wall, starting some spine crawlers here, maybe a little bit worried about drops or something. Um, neither one of us have really gotten a lot of information off, and... It's been mostly my fault on that regard because I haven't saved scans to figure out what's going on here, but I'm just going to rely on my Hellions to kind of tell me what he's doing as soon as I get a decent amount. And this is always the hard part about playing a new game is you don't really know what's out on the map or what's possible at what time, so you have to play a little bit overly cautious, and that can be a little bit annoying too. So third base finishing up for the Zerg here, grabbing 1-1 one, one for his Roaches and Hydras. I'm just starting up Banshee production, and this is going to be a little bit more of a modern... Heart of the Swarm-esque type of mech composition that has Blue Flame Hellions, it'll have Banshees, and it'll have Thors in it. It's really common right now in Heart of the Swarm to run with that composition, so I just thought I would see how it translated, or if the Zerg had new tools that would make that more obsolete. And uh, for the most part, I guess I can go ahead and just kind of advance forward to say that uh, this, this mech style is still pretty good. Uh, you won't really come into a lot of uh, contact with things that are just going to shut this down super hard. So I'm just trying to get in here with my Hellions. I unfortunately don't know what's behind this wall, so I'm kind of trying to be a little bit careful. Seeing the Roaches is a little bit alarming, considering I'll never win this trade. So I'm just going to try to see what I can get here. Exert a little bit of map control, try to make him overproduce on units and whatnot, see what I can get done. The Banshees are finishing up here. And um, I also have to say that the latter half of this game is going to be a little bit slow because I realize that he's dead um, at a certain point and I just keep playing just to see if I can figure out new stuff with the unit. So uh, I apologize if that does run a little bit long, but uh, I guess you can be prepared for it now. So I'm just heading out with my Hellions here trying to see what I can get. This is pretty standard uh, mech Terran against Zerg right now uh, in Heart of the Swarm, so nothing too weird going on right now. Especially if the Zerg is out of position or doesn't have his creep spread well enough, he'll have a really hard time figuring out where stuff is coming from. I also have a Banshee out on the map that has cloaks. I'm getting a handful of drone kills here as well. Um, and then, obviously, these Banshees have really high survivability, especially if you were able to get the speed upgrade later in the game. And I'm just trying to distract him. Hellions just come in here and absolutely roast up everything. And one thing that's really underrated is that if you know that he's going to report to that before you can do too much, just try to kill the larva if you can, because that's going to really stress him for... See, he has all of these extra resources, but he can't spend them right now because he just doesn't have enough larva. So always an interesting way to uh, get a little bit of extra damage going. By the way, I'm again being very lazy on my worker production. I'm only at 45, which is very unfortunate, because if I was running this properly, I could actually just basically be cripplingly ahead right now. But just playing too much with the new units and kind of getting adjusted to playing all three races and whatnot is going to leave a lot of room for mistakes. Uh, Hellions do have to just go ahead and retreat. There's a lot of roaches out right now. And this is one of the concerning things with this composition is that if they just roach really hard and you don't have the right composition or if you didn't do enough damage earlier, it can be a little bit hard to deal with. So I'm incrementing out Thors, getting some Banshees here. And uh, I should have my armory done, yeah, of course, because I do have Thors, so I can transfer these into Hellbats, and they'll still do pretty well against Roach compositions, stuff like this. The big issue here, though, is that I'm really behind in upgrades, um, and that's one thing I'm definitely going to have to start working out, is when to start getting these upgrades for mech, considering they do feel a little bit awkward sometimes. But uh, starting to produce Hellbats instead of Hellions now, not that it really matters, because you can transform back and forth between the two. And from this point, it's really like... What do I want to do with my army composition, and what am I going to do late game if this game doesn't end right away? He does have Burrow Move, which I totally neglected as a possibility. So he's just going to head right in here and start doing some damage. My army is obviously quite out of position. But once I realize it, I do start to get it over there. Transforming my Hellbats just to be sure I get better trades against these Roaches. But uh, 
This Burrow Grudge stuff is kind of cute. Uh, the only downside is that he's so far behind that this is probably never going to do anything useful. By the way, you still can block off Burrowed Roaches by uh, just raising your depots. So uh, this is kind of an oversight by him, is he should have actually just moved out of here with these Burrowed Roaches, since I don't think this turret can actually see that far. It might be close, actually, now that I think about it. Um, and I think that's what he's concerned about. But I think he's also hoping that I just raise my depot, which is would be silly. I don't know why I'd ever do that. So kind of get some free roaches here. Behind this, he's trying to transform or transform transition into hydras, and I'm trying to think of what he could do here to try and get back in this game. And it'd be really hard for him because this this type of mech doesn't really have a lot of weaknesses other than a lot of roaches, and he lost a lot of roaches just a second ago. So this is a super scary kind of death push that these Hydras are going to have a really hard time holding up against. Um, and by the way, look at the minimap here. It's so hard to see this on the minimap because this all, this all just blends in with the background. It's been a big complaint that I've had for quite a while about uh, new Legacy of the Void stuff. It's just so hard to see stuff on the minimap. Uh, so that's kind of unfortunate, but he's trying to transition here. He had, kind of has a little bit of minerals, but it's not like making Zerglings or something would have really helped him out too much against a push like this. So Banshee's all just rolling in here. Uh, the mech is 1-1 by this point, so pretty formidable. He's a, not quite on 2-2. He will be by the time he decides to pick this fight. But I just have so much damage output and so much ability to tank and kind of do extra things with Thors and whatnot. The downside is that a lot of my Hellbats are kind of AFKing throughout this battle. So if I position this a little better, it would have gone even more favorably. But still, he's having a really hard time uh, holding this off. And to be honest, guys, like, uh, even when I was playing this, I was like, okay, I could easily just rally stuff down here for my factories. I could rally down Hellions and just transform them when they get there. But I'm throwing down a whole bunch of extra starports and extra battlecruiser tech and stuff because I just want to see how they handle and what they feel like. Uh, so I know he's dead here. This isn't going to be a very competitive game from this point on because he, he'll be dead for a little while, but I kind of want to play around with the new stuff and see what I can get. And you'll notice that I even just walk home, whereas I probably should have just kept going, maybe landed some mules to repair and whatnot. If this were a real game, I definitely would have done that. But since it is just beta, it's, it's, there's no harm in just kind of messing around and playing around with new units and stuff and seeing how they all work. So just kind of rallying down here, just going to try to keep him on his heels just a little bit. Not too much of a reason to go home. Um, as far as the things that might have helped him win that battle, I would say if he was able to get Swarm Hosts up in any capacity, he could probably pick away at it just a little bit, but he would have to start picking away at it on my side of the map. Um, some other options could be things like Vipers, trying to just pull in one or two Thors at a time into the big clump of army that he had without taking a full-on engagement. You'll notice this is the point in the game where I'm just getting every upgrade. This upgrade looks like the old Reaper upgrades, and that's because it's the same picture, but this is for Banshee speed. Um, I'm not, I don't remember exactly what this is. I want to think it's durable materials, but I think that it's been changed to something else I can't quite remember right now. Uh, this is obviously Raven Energy, and I, we could see this if their UI stuff was working, but it's unfortunately not. Uh, so I could tell you a little bit more, but I'm just trying to get into battle cruisers. I really want to see how the new battle cruisers uh, handle, and especially with their teleport ability, what it feels like. And I have to say, for the most part, that the teleporting ability doesn't feel that great. Uh, it feels a little bit linear, and I think it's mostly going to be for retreating battle cruisers rather than harassing too much. Because if you just teleport some battle cruisers into a bad location that you don't really know what's going on, then you're just going to lose them all anyway, and not really have a good way to get out of there. Uh, he's just trying to trade a little bit with some Zorglings that were up here harassing just a tad. And one annoying thing is he is going to go ahead and grab my uh, my SCV building, the command center here. And by the way, I've mentioned this a few times, notice the game timer right now. I'm taking a fifth base at about 14 minutes, and this all feels pretty normal for this economy pace. But that's also because the 14 minutes is real time. So you can even look down at the YouTube video time, and it should be almost exactly synced up with the in-clock, or rather in-Starcraft game timer. So... This will equate out to about 21 minutes or so when I'm taking this fifth base, so nothing too crazy. Just grabbing some Ravens here, going to be grabbing some battle cruisers. And again, I know he's been dead for quite a long time, but I do want to play around with this army just a little bit. I'm almost double his supply as well. So just kind of playing around. He's going to go ahead and put out some swarm hosts here to see what he can get done. Um, these things are actually really interesting in the sense of how fast they are. So if you can see them on creep, they move, they move at basically Hydra speed. Whereas before, they moved maybe like slow roach speed off creep uh, before uh, Legacy of the Void. 
So I'm just grabbing a lot of battle cruisers, five battle cruisers at a time here. Definitely have the income to support this, so no harm in doing that. And uh, sending in some Hellions here, trying to trade out some supply. Killed just an absolute boatload of workers this game. 36 workers killed. And still counting as I try to pick off some Zerglings and whatnot. There's the Flying Locust, as you guys can see, but they still do have to land before they do anything. I think you can manually land them, as you can see the, the marker right here for that ability. So I think you can actually fly them somewhere and manually land them before actually doing anything. Otherwise, they seem like they will land uh, on a target of your choice. I'm, I'm going to have to test that out when I play Zerg, but I'm not totally sure if that's how it works right now. So just getting a lot of battle cruisers here. For being at 196 supply, I do have a few more workers than I probably should. I should probably make like three or four extra command centers just so I could dump some workers. Here's these speedy banshees, by the way, and look how fast these things travel now uh, with the upgrades. These things are super fast. Just getting in there, trying to pick off whatever you can. And they're so fast that if the opponent just has hydras or something, it takes them forever to recover to everything. I actually moved my banshees a little bit too early because I thought his hydras would be there by now. So I'm just going to head in here, see what I can get, wait for the hydras to report, and then move somewhere else. So these, these new banshees, especially in late game, are going to be super annoying because they are really fast, especially with being able to cloak like this too. And I was surprised. I was pretty sure I was out of range of that sport crawler, but apparently it could still hit me, so that was kind of annoying. Uh, so a lot of battle cruisers here, and uh, you can see where this will hopefully be going in uh, Legacy of the Void, is trying to get out more capital ships and kind of make it a little bit more important as far as getting these big beasts up. So you can see these big, huge units on the map as opposed to seeing just a lot of piddly units as uh, the previous versions of StarCraft were. I'm actually just throwing away these stores on purpose just because I want to have more battle cruisers and just to make the swarm house matter even less, which I think is going to be a lot more of a thing as well. And Legacy of the Void is trying to just trade out useless supply by this stage of the game. Obviously, I could kill them at pretty much any time. There's the battle cruiser teleport. Just trying to teleport in there and see how much I can possibly get done. You'll note that he is moving across the map here, so he can either go back to try to defend that or he can try to harass my base. Either way, I have enough ravens and stuff that at least mitigate it for a little while. But I'm at the point where I could lose a base and probably wouldn't matter too much. So even more workers killed. 63 workers down this game. Uh, again, just trying to mess with these battle cruisers a little bit. This is one awkward thing, is that if you ever offensively teleport in, that means you're going to have a long flight home if you ever have to do that. So that's going to be a reason why I'm going to say this is pretty linear. This is mostly going to be for like a teleport them out of battle type of move. But the problem with that is that if you try to do that against a race like, say, Protoss, for example, they can just feed back your battle cruisers. Then you won't have energy to do something like that. So I, I don't really like that ability very much. I think it's it's interesting for about the 10 seconds that you don't really think very hard about it. But when once you start to think about it, you're like, uh, okay, I don't I don't know how useful this can really be in the long term. Um, especially since you can get EMP'd or fed back by Ghosts or Templar or whatever else would affect energy. Pretty much the only race that you can't uh, do that with is Zerg. By the way, some Seeker Missiles coming down just for the lulls. Grabbing a couple of Hydras there. But there's so many battle cruisers here, and especially with decent upgrades, which I totally do not have. These battle cruisers can actually take a lot of punishment. Uh, so he's trying to actually fly his uh, targeted units into my battle cruisers are trying to make the secret missile my own army but even still making pretty short work of that as well and we're going to start seeing some massive model stuff honestly this is going to go on for a little while longer um i guess we'll just watch it just for the sake of watching some uh kind of terran porn here <laughs> watching yamato's just wreck a hatchery and then fly away kind of fun but uh yeah I just, I just thought this was an interesting game just to try out the s s pretty much normal style of mech for uh Legs, or rather Heart of the Swarm, and see how that all fit in with uh, Legacy of the Void stuff. It seems like it's still pretty good, probably still going to be the same norm as it was before. But also I wanted to try out these new battle cruisers and see what they were like, and see if I could get any use out of the offensive uh, teleport ability, which totally you cannot. By the way, look how fast these locusts kill this planetary. This is only like a handful of locusts, maybe 10 to start off with, and it kills the planetary easily. So. These new Swarm Host Locusts are very strong, even canceling the Command Center again as I foolishly try to build another one. But, uh, like I said, I'm just messing with them just a little bit here, knowing that this game has been over for quite a little while. He impressively actually canceled that. That was pretty cool. Sending in a second squad of Hellions just to deal a little bit of damage. But, uh, yeah, this game's going to end in just a little bit while, about 30 seconds or so, so we can just start talking about some other stuff. 
My plan as of the release date of this video, which should be, I, you, I call it late Saturday night, but it's actually early Sunday morning. I'm going to try to stream some Zerg games on Sunday, so check out my stream, which is twitch.tv slash magnetsc2, and you can check that out there. Doing a little bit more offensive recalls, and this is kind of the stage of the game where if you can offensive recall into their base like this, the game's already over anyway, so not really getting too much out of that, but I thought it's a cool effect that people might want to see. But yeah, check out my stream, which I will be doing Zerg stuff on Sunday, probably later at night. Uh, so check it out there. You can always watch my VODs and my streams there if you want to see this all in first person and see some other games that I played. But I'll be doing some streaming on Sunday. I'll try to get some more games up on Monday for you guys, whether it's my own ladder games or some pro games. I'm still trying to get in touch with some uh, pro players and get them to give up their replays for the sake of people that want to watch them. But uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out, guys. I'll be back with more videos real soon. Uh, take care.